It's the defining expo experience, the waiting, but waiting with near superhuman patience and good humor. Every few minutes, section by section, the queue surges towards its destination. In this case, the Saudi Arabian Pavilion, the undoubted hot ticket. On some days, the wait has been up to 10 hours. Today, it's a mere six. Because we heard that the Saudi Pavilion is the best, we have to queue to see it. We make our own fun here in the queue, but for older people it might be a problem. I can handle this queue. I do heavy physical work anyway. And this is what they've been waiting for, a 15-minute ride through a massive and certainly impressive promotional video. Over the years, the World Expo events have lessened in profile and some say relevance, but China was determined to make a major statement in Shanghai, clearing a 5.3 square kilometer riverside site of houses and residents, spending $4 billion on the expo itself and an official $45 billion on the city's infrastructure. This event hasn't been without its controversy, particularly in the international coverage of forced evictions from the site and the sheer amount of money lavished on it. But on its own terms, it's been a roaring success, well exceeding the 70 million visitor target, and those visitors seem happy. Through the expo, China has impacted the world. It shows the world what our country is like. I just finished the, um, the trip to Italy, probably. And now I want to into the UK. For the vast majority of the visitors, this is as close as they'll get to international travel. In Germany, they eat meat and mash, washed down with steins of beer. In Britain, if the queuing hadn't been enough, they sample another national pastime, sitting wrapped up in deck chairs on a wintry afternoon. And with the expo nearing its end, they leave, with virtual passports full of stamps, and prepare to wait again for the bus home. Harry Fawcett, Al Jazeera, Shanghai.